Jerome Leon Bruckheimer is an American film and television producer. He has been active in the genres of action, drama, fantasy, and science fiction. Some of his best known films include Flashdance, Top Gun, The Rock, Crimson Tide, Con Air, Armageddon, Enemy of the State, Black Hawk Down, Pearl Harbor, and The Beverly Hills Cop, Bad Boys, Pirates of the Caribbean, and National Treasure franchises. Many of his films have been co-produced by Paramount and Disney, while many of his television series have been co-produced by Warner Brothers and CBS Studios. In July 2003, Bruckheimer was honored by Variety as the first producer in Hollywood history to produce the top two highest-grossing films of a single weekend, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl and Bad Boys 2. His best-known television series are CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, CSI, Miami, CSI, NY, CSI, Cyber, Without a Trace, Cold Case, and the American version of The Amazing Race. At one point, Three of his TV series ranked among the top ten in the U.S. ratings, a unique feat in television. He is also the co-founder and co-majority owner of the Seattle Kraken, the 2021 expansion team of the National Hockey League. Biography Early Life Bruckheimer was born in Detroit, the son of German-Jewish immigrants. He graduated from Mumford High School in 1961 in Detroit, at age 17, before moving to Arizona for college. Bruckheimer was also an active member of the Stamp Collecting Club. He graduated with a degree in psychology from the University of Arizona. He was a member of the Zeta Beta Tau fraternity. A film buff at an early age with an interest in photography, Bruckheimer would take snapshots when he had the opportunity. After college Bruckheimer worked in advertising in Detroit and New York City. At the Detroit agency he worked on a one-minute ad spot for the new Pontiac GTO. Early in his career, Bruckheimer produced television commercials, including one for Pepsi. 1970s and 1980s. From advertising to film production Bruckheimer started producing films in the 1970s, after leaving his job in advertising, with director Dick Richards. They had worked together on the films The Culpepper Cattle Company, Farewell, My Lovely, and March or Die. Bruckheimer then worked with Paul Schrader on two films, American Gigolo and Cat People, which began to give him notice in Hollywood. During the 1980s and 1990s, he was a co-producer with Don Simpson of a string of highly successful Hollywood films for Paramount Pictures. He first met Simpson at a screening of 1973's The Harder They Come at Warner Brothers. The two worked together and created Bruckheimer's first big hit, 1983's Flashdance, which brought in $95 million. United States dollars. He had a number of other hits during that time period, including the Beverly Hills Cop films, Top Gun, and Days of Thunder. Top Gun marked his first collaboration with English director Tony Scott who directed six films for Bruckheimer. The first Beverly Hills Cop movie, which was supposed to star Sylvester Stallone launched Eddie Murphy's career and became Paramount's highest-grossing winter release in the company's history in just five days. While working with Simpson, Bruckheimer became known as Mr. Outside, because of his experience with filmmaking, while Simpson became known as Mr. Inside, because of his film industry contacts. The Rock was the last film in which Bruckheimer collaborated with Simpson. After Simpson's death in 1996, Bruckheimer stipulated that The Rock be dedicated to the memory of Simpson. 1990s. Big budget films In 1990, Bruckheimer and Simpson struck a $500 million deal with Paramount to produce five movies of their entire choice. However, his 1990 production Days of Thunder starring Tom Cruise did not perform well, a step backwards in the Bruckheimer-Simpson success story. The duo made a comeback in 1994 with the low-budget film The Ref. Despite Simpson's untimely death, Bruckheimer has continued to produce a large number of action films often working with director Michael Bay for several hits including Armageddon. His other hit films produced include Remember the Titans, Black Hawk Down and the Pirates of the Caribbean series. He has also acquired the rights to produce a film based on the popular role-playing game by Palladium Books, Rifts. In the late 1990s, he started out technical black films to produce non-action films, with Remember the Titans being the only film produced. 2000s. Franchises, TV, video games Since 1996 he has branched out into television, creating a number of police dramas of which CSI, Crime Scene Investigation has been the most successful. He has also produced the reality game show The Amazing Race. In May 2008 CBS announced it had picked up Bruckheimer's newest series, 11th Hour, for the 2008-2009 broadcast television season. The science fiction drama follows a government agent and a professor as they investigate strange scientific and medical activity. From 2004 to 2009, Bruckheimer had six hit television shows on the air. CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, CSI, Miami, CSI, NY, Cold Case, Without a Trace and The Amazing Race. At one point, three of his TV series ranked among the top ten in the ratings. In December 2007 Bruckheimer announced plans to partner with MTV to create a new game studio. The same year Bruckheimer joined the Zenimix Media Board of Directors and has since showed up at several launch parties for Bethesda Softworks titles including Fallout 3, Fallout, 
New Vegas, and The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. In 2009, Bruckheimer unveiled Jerry Bruckheimer Games headed by former Microsoft Studios publishing executive producer Jim Vivert as president of production and Jay Cohen, previously Ubisoft's vice president of U.S. publishing, as president of development. It was announced on September 10, 2009 that NBC had picked up an action procedural from Jerry Bruckheimer. The show, titled Chase, tells the stories of a team charged with making sure fugitive criminals don't evade justice, reports The Hollywood Reporter. It was cancelled in May 2011. Bruckheimer's most notable flop was Skin, which was cancelled after three episodes in 2003. In 2011 it was rumored that Jerry Bruckheimer Games was working on three titles, but nothing came out of it ever since. In March 2013 Jerry Bruckheimer Games was closed. Although Jerry Bruckheimer Games is closed, Bruckheimer still remained a Zenimix board member, mostly due to being a close associate of former Zenimix president Ernest Dell until Zenimix was purchased by Microsoft in 2021. 2010s. Independent producer, sports in 2014. After the disappointment of The Sorcerer's Apprentice and The Lone Ranger, Jerry Bruckheimer and the Disney Studios split up by not renewing their first look deal that expired that year. He signed a new first look deal with Paramount that same year, and mentioned a new Beverly Hills Cop and a Top Gun 2 as potential production ventures with his new partner. In June 2016, Jerry Bruckheimer Television became an independent outfit, ending a 15-year run exclusive pact with Warner Brothers Television. The next year, the production company signed a deal with CBS Television Studios. Bruckheimer was named as one of the investors of a proposed sports arena in Las Vegas, and had been rumored to be the leading choice by the National Hockey League to own an expansion hockey team that would play in the arena. Bruckheimer was also named as one of the investors of a proposed Seattle-based NHL expansion team whose application was submitted in early 2018. The NHL Board of Governors voted to approve the team, named the Seattle Kraken, on December 4, 2018, which just start play in the 2021-22 season. Jerry Bruckheimer was part of an investment group that also included Tim Lee Weeke and David Bonderman. More recently, his first look deal with Paramount was not renewed. Impact on the film industry High Profit Productions The movie Top Gun was produced in collaboration with the Pentagon to rebrand the U.S. Navy's image post-Vietnam War, and attract new Navy recruits. Top Gun was the first full-blown collaboration between Hollywood and the U.S. Navy. The model developed by Jerry Bruckheimer around the production of Top Gun launched a new trend of war movies in the 90s and onward. In July 2003, Bruckheimer was honored by Variety as the first producer in Hollywood history to produce the top two highest-grossing films of a single weekend, The Buddy Cop Bad Boys 2 and the Disney theme park spin-off, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. According to Variety, the Bruckheimer touch is characterized by a consistently edgy, high-octane visual dynamic and equally distinctive storytelling driven by the triumphalism so popular with Madison Avenue. The Pirates of the Caribbean film series, produced through Walt Disney Pictures, was enormously profitable, and demonstrated Bruckheimer's ability to create lucrative projects. Pirates of the Caribbean. The Curse of the Black Pearl, the first film in the franchise, was released on July 9, 2003. A popular box office hit, it was well received by critics and filmgoers alike. After the unexpected success of the first film, Walt Disney Pictures revealed that a trilogy was in the works. Pirates of the Caribbean. Dead Man's Chest was released on July 7, 2006. The sequel proved to be very successful, breaking records worldwide the day of its premiere. In the end it acquired a total of $1,066,179,725 at the worldwide box office, becoming the third and fastest film to reach this amount. The third film in the series, Pirates of the Caribbean, at World's End, was released worldwide on May 25, 2007. Two more films, Pirates of the Caribbean, on Stranger Tides and Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, were released, in 2011 and 2017, respectively. Altogether, the film franchise has grossed over $4.5 billion worldwide. Personal views when asked about his favorite films, Bruckheimer named The Godfather, The French Connection, Goodwill Hunting, and The 400 Blows. When asked on what the film industry's obligation to an audience was, he responded, We are in the transportation business. We transport audiences from one place to another. When asked why he makes films, he stated, If I made films for the critics, or for someone else, I'd probably be living in some small Hollywood studio apartment. In a 1984 interview with the Los Angeles Times, he said, We put together all the elements. We decide what aesthetic is right for a picture. We are as much a part of the process as the director. In May 2006, he was honored with a Doctor of Fine Arts degree from the University of Arizona's College of Fine Arts. Other commitments Philanthropic activities Bruckheimer's philanthropic activities have included publicly supporting the fight against multiple sclerosis via his work with the Nancy Davis Foundation for MS. He has additionally pledged to help various causes by establishing the Jerry Bruckheimer Foundation. However, according to The Smoking Gun, the last time the Jerry Bruckheimer Foundation made a contribution was in 1995, when it gave $9,350 to Van Nuys Prep School.
Bruckheimer has aided in the repair and restoration of the historic clipper ship Cuddy Sark. A collection of photos taken by Bruckheimer went on display in London in November 2007 to help raise money for the Cuddy Sark Conservation Project. The exhibition featured more than 30 pictures taken on set during the filming of Pirates of the Caribbean, at World's End. Political contributions Bruckheimer has donated more than $50,000 to Republican campaigns and committees. He donated funds to John McCain's 2008 presidential election campaign. He gave $5,000 to a joint fundraising committee on John McCain's behalf. He donated $25,000 to the 2012 Mitt Romney Victory Fund.